seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? That cursed, elusive Pimpernel. Hey, gentlemen, there's nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Why not come and spend Christmas in the country with us, Blake? Well, somebody who's got to keep my excellent Mrs. Burton company. Oh, God, the rest of the servants have gone to their parents. Quite right, Christmas is a family affair. The only time of the year when I can really stand my... <laughs> Christmas is for children. Yes, and it's about time there was an heir to the Blakeney estate. Oh, that old story. I don't want children. I don't want to be married. I don't want Christmas. I just want to be left a poor, lonely bachelor to a little peace and quiet. I know you. Peace and quiet are the last things you want. You never met my sister, did you, Blakeney? It's just right for you. She's 15. At that age, girls always fall in love with middle-aged men. Another word from you. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me interrupting you, gentlemen. This is Burton, by all that's one. I came to give you this note, which has just arrived. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. Another invitation to one of those wild parties, I suppose. Uh, yes, yes, it is an invitation. Punch, I see, at this hour of the day. Oh, come, it's almost Christmas time. Won't you join us, Mrs. Yes, Burton? Yes, come along, no, Mrs. Thank Burton. You, oh, come along, Burton. please. Please, 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 come along. I promised your dear mother I'd never touch a drop. I now, now, Mrs. Burton, you're not as old as all that. Oh, yes, I am. Old enough to spank you all when you were still in petticoats. Don't tell me I ever wore a petticoat. <laughs> what an appalling thought. <laughs> petticoats meant something when I was a girl. These new, slim fashions. Oh, but they're revealing, Mrs. Burton. They're revealing. Revealing? You don't know the meaning of the word. Women today display their charms and there's nothing left to reveal. <laughs> Mrs. Burton, Andrew, I certainly think you'll need a drink. When your dear father was master here in King George II's day, petticoats rustled in every corridor, especially at Christmas. Children all over the place. Goodness knows where they came from. I don't know what men are coming to these days. Oh, we, we manage in our modest way. We manage. Men weren't meant to manage. A woman's what's needed to manage here. Yeah. Yeah. And children. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Why, in your father's... Well, of course, I don't think your father remembered how many children he did have. Really? <laughs> Blakeney, I think we'll leave this house of shame for the sanctity of our families. Come, Mrs. Burton. Before any more ghosts start rattling in your cupboards, please. Yes, you go back to your Christmas at home. Merry Christmas, Blakeney. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Listen, Sheila. Chauvelin has made an important capture in the South. Are you listening? The Marquis de Chalon and his sister, the Baroness Larive, and the Count de Malone. They're imprisoned in a large house on the outskirts of Nantes. Now, why a house, not a prison? Say that. This is going to mean you'll have to spend Christmas alone with Mrs. Burton. Oh, Mrs. Burton? Yes, Sir Percy? I've decided to go away, after all, for a few days. Another of your trips to the country, I suppose. Doesn't Christmas mean anything to you, leaving me here alone in this house? I remember Christmas in your father's day. I know, as you already told us, the place full of little Blakeneys and little Fitz Blakeneys. Oh, Sir Percy, I never suggested that. I'm truly very sorry. Really, I am. I'll try to be back for Christmas. Come on, Sheila.
are you doing here? Just making sure everything is secure. You, uh, you couldn't tell me where I could find the uh, Marquis de Chalon. I'm looking for him to give him a message. Good, I like to get messages. You? Of course, that's my real name. Not Citizen Chalon, as insist on calling me. I'm Jean-Paul Henri Marie Edmond Marquis de Chalon, Baron Bonpierre, Sire de Langir et Montmorin. Of course, I never use all those names. You can call me Jean-Paul if you like. Thank you, Jean-Paul. Uh, you wouldn't know where I could uh, find your sister. And the Baroness, La Rive, and uh, the Comte de Melun. Frogai, he's in there with the others. Come on, I'll show you. This is my sister, Renée. Charles. He is the Comte de Muller. And this is Antoinette. Of course, she's only a baby. I'm not a baby. Charles is the one who always cries. Yes, of course, you're all so much older than I thought you'd be. That means you can keep a secret, can't you? How would you like to go to a Christmas party? But there isn't any Christmas anymore in France. <sighs> I'm going to take you somewhere where there is. Good, I'd like to go there. Me too. Me, Me too. too. Now listen. I'm going away now, but I shall come back. And if you all do exactly as you're told, you can come with me. But you mustn't breathe a word about my being here, do you understand? Promise. I, Jean-Paul Henri Marie Edmond Marquis de Chalon, Baron Bonpierre, Sid Langir et Montmorin. There he goes again, just because he's a Marquis. I promise. So, so do I. I. That's Dr. Moore coming to make sure we're safely asleep.
remember all of you? Not a word about my not really being Dr. Aristide. That is our secret. Our secret. All you have to do is to lie quiet in bed. Uh, you shall can groan a little if you want to. Uh, don't overdo it. Quick, 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 into bed, all of you. Precaution. Open. Open. Mouth. Merely a precaution, but one cannot afford to take any chances. Dr. Aristide. Ah, Dr. Morois, my esteemed colleague. Uh, what is all this? Who is this man? Orders. Orders from Citizen Chauvelin. Plague? What utter nonsense. These children were perfectly healthy last night. Oh, my dear colleague, when I examined them by order of Citizen Chauvelin, they burst out coughing and swelled at the knees. Even you will agree that this is a highly indicative symptom. What's that you've been giving everybody? A precautionary measure. Castor oil. Capitan, arrest these men at once. Oh, take your hands off me. It is highly contagious. I only this morning when I examined them, they had purple spots on the soles of their feet. That can mean only one thing, plague. Let me see. My dear colleague, I would be only too happy for you to confirm my diagnosis. into the bushes, quickly. Charles, Jean-Paul, Antoinette. René, Gia, Gia. Go on, go on, go on. Settles it. Would you like to come with us? You would, very much. Oh. We pay for him. And we set off once again. We 
have lost our way. Can you help us? Of course. Come in. Where are you bound for, citizen? For the coast. Indeed. Have you come far? We have been traveling since morning. Then you must be hungry. We do not have much, but you are welcome to share it. It is most generous of you. Dr. Highstreet is taking us to a Christmas party. Christmas? Do not speak of Christmas here. It is Christmas everywhere in the world, except here in France. The glorious revolution has abolished it. The more's the pity. You speak treason, citizen. You are not true revolutionary. If ever there was a revolutionary, it was that child of Christmas. But he wanted a revolution of love, not of hate. Out! Out, all of you! I do not want you here. A child like your own. A home like yours. Three kings, aristocrats, you would call them, coming to pay homage. La France will be la France again when she remembers Christmas. These children were rescued from the authorities. They are looking for them. Aristocrats. Like yours. Like him. Move the table, quickly. There is a cellar below. Let them in. Sit down. Let them in. You are a long time opening it. We are looking for some children with a man accompanying them. We have not seen them. They are aristocrats and enemies of the Republic. They are the Marquis de Chalon and his sister, the Count de Melun and the Baroness Larive. There is a price on their heads. The man with them is the Scarlet Pimpinel. There is a reward of 50,000 francs if he is caught. There is no one here except us. You can see for yourself, citizen captain. If you see anything of these people, it is your duty to report it immediately. Good night, citizen. And, uh, here is some bread and some milk for the children on the way. You cannot miss the path. It will keep you clear of the roads. I have no words to thank you. You are a true friend of the revolution, but you risked your life for us. Why? I do not quite know myself. Monsieur.
one of you. Not a word about Dr. Aristide or about anything that happened. It's our secret. Our secret. Christmas present, Mrs. Burton. Mercy me! Uh, this is uh, Charles, uh, Jean-Paul, René, and Antoinette. But where are we going to put them? Oh, Mrs. Burton, you always said the house was teeming with children. Children, yes. But animals. Please, Mrs. Burton. Come along, Sheila. Say hello to the donkey. Don't be jealous. <laughs> oh, Sir Percy. It's a wonderful Christmas present. Mercy me, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. Happy Christmas, everybody. Ah, my dear Blakely, delighted to see you back again. How do you like the costume? Oh, the very height of fashion. <laughs> Old German custom, you know. St. Nicholas. Of course, I ought really to have the black devil called Krampus with me. Uh, he is uh, here already. Oh, well, so he is. <laughs> And you've got an ass, but all you want is an ox. <laughs> oh, perhaps you've got one. <laughs> oh, sorry you missed the rout at Carlton House tonight. It's been a tremendous success. <laughs> but suddenly, I thought, must go and see the lonely Blakely and find out how he's getting on. And if uh, Mohammed won't come to the mountain, then the... <laughs> there I go again. <laughs> I must come to you. <laughs> so I've brought along some friends with me to sing a carol for you as a Christmas present. So I must say, you seem to have been collecting quite a few for yourself already. Oh, oh, oh. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping, ten lords a-leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a-milking, seven swans a-swimming, six geese a-laying. Five gold rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers fighting, ten lords are leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids are milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying. Five gold Calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Nine, eight, seven, eight, 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 eight,